Alrighty, folks, we're here to recap season two of House of the Dragon. Here's the quick recap. Nothing happened for a whole season. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Alrighty, folks, so just finished season two of House of the Dragon, and that was the worst season finale of any series that maybe I've ever seen in my entire life. When we last left our story at the end of season one, it seemed as though the High Towers and the Targaryens were about to go to war. And when we left season two, it seemed like the High Towers and the Targaryens were about to go to war. I know, it sounds like I just said the same sentence twice, but I changed the part about which season it was because nothing happened for eight episodes. I'm sorry, it's the worst. There's basically one half of one good episode. So episode four, there is something called the Battle of Rook's Rest. And it's about 20 minutes of awesome. And that's kind of it. The rest of the season is comprised of various attempts to assassinate the others. So Rhaenyra doesn't want to do anything for the entire season. So let me just go through real fast what happens to each of these characters during this season and why it makes no sense. Damon takes his dragon, runs away from Rhaenyra because he thinks she's a pansy, runs over to Harrenhal, sits there for an entire season and gets high and has weird dreams and then bends the knee to Rhaenyra. That's his entire season. Rhaenyra spends the entire time being angsty about whether to go to war with the High Towers, who literally have killed her child, which makes no sense. Jaceris Valerian, who is her kid, is a complete waste of space. He sits there being incredibly whiny. Rhaenys, who might've been the only decent leader in all of this, decides to ride a dragon to get killed for, again, no reason you can discern. Aegon does nothing the entire season except be a drunken sot. Aemon, who's the only person with a plan, doesn't enact any of those plans this year at all. Helena suddenly is like warging or something, and there was no hint that she was gonna do any of that. She also seems bizarrely undisturbed by watching one of her children beheaded. Like she's, she's disturbed by that very briefly, but it seems like for a person who is, you know, the victim of incest of her brother as promoted by her parents, and then watches one of her kids beheaded, I feel like she should be a little more screwed up than she is. Reyna, just, stumbles around the landscape until she finds a dragon, correct? That's her entire storyline? Yeah, that, that was great. For some reason, she had a conflict with someone that I didn't understand. There's like a lady who she goes to live with and apparently they don't get along and then she just gets thrown out and then finds a dragon. I'm pretty sure that was all eight episodes for her. And then there was Bela who just kind of exists. Well done writers, like seriously solid writing right there. Nothing happened, nothing. And then when you get to the high towers, Allison sits around being upset that her kids are brats and annoying. Basically, she's willing to let them die. Gwen Hightower, who, again, the actor who plays him, Freddie Fox, is really quite amusing, and he's in a bunch of different stuff now. He's becoming kind of a, a, a thing. Basically, his entire role is just to follow around Kristen Cole and say snarky things sometimes. And Kristen Cole, his entire job is to shoot up at Allison and be really good at battle, but have no actual plan to be a nihilist. So just, wow, that was, that was great. Every one of these series has a plot driver. The plot drivers in House of the Dragon are Aemon and Daemon. Daemon was sidelined for the entire season, having weird visions of the future, the wall and Jon Snow and all this. And for some reason that's supposed to change his motivation for a reason that I can't quite discern. And here's the thing, we already know how that ends. So it's not even suspenseful. I actually don't like the Daemon storyline at all this season, not just because he's wandering around like he took too much ecstasy and weirdly hugging trees and such, but mainly because his entire driving motivation in this season is he doesn't think that Rhaenyra can do the job. She's not harsh enough. She's not cruel enough. He can do the job. He was meant to be the king. And so he spends the entire season doing nothing and then eventually bending the knee to Rhaenyra because he had a vision of like the White Walkers at the wall hundreds of years from now. That's stupid. And meanwhile, Aemond, who should be the active participant, right? He's the only one who actually drives the action on the high tower side of the, of the narrative. He's sidelined the entire season. He appears for five minutes the entire season which is weird because when we left season one, he was the driving force. He's the one who killed the Targaryen kid, which means that he's the one who's leading off the war, but then he goes completely missing. Meanwhile, Aegon spends the entire season lying sick in his bed and talking about how he doesn't have it that works anymore. And meanwhile, you have Otto Hightower, who again was a driving force who is sidelined within the first five minutes of this season. And he's sent off and now he's in prison or something gets to the end and you realize that he's been imprisoned by someone, but we don't know exactly whom. So the driving forces in the season are just gone because Rhaenyra is unbelievably passive. She's kind of like middle of the series run Game of Thrones Daenerys. 
or Daenerys you think is going to be like this driving force, and then you just get to end up sidelined, doing nothing of relevance to the plot. That That's Rhaenyra. She spends the entire time kind of wandering around, being angsty about having to be at war, and then having like a random lesbian kiss with her advisor that ends up undercutting her character because the entire question of whether she's going to end up with Damon is one of the driving forces, and then they have her kind of like be a bisexual with this. Like, it's just, it's randomly thrown in there for woke purposes, I can only imagine, because the lady who plays Rhaenyra is apparently a bisexual, non-binary, agender human, even though she's obviously a good-looking woman. So basically, none of the season made any sense. Alicent Hightower is portrayed by the end of the season as the true evil driving force in all of this. History will paint you a villain. Let them think what they must. Even though in the actual plot line, she's much more responsible than Rhaenyra. She's the only person who sees any attention to duty. She's forced into this whole situation by her dad. She's a victim in all of this, and suddenly she is the person who's the evil person, while Rhaenyra, who has spent the entire series basically being wildly irresponsible, is suddenly the responsible force, which I didn't see at all. You get to that last scene where Alicent meets with Rhaenyra and basically says she's willing to sacrifice even her own kids so she can be free of this whole burden. And Rhaenyra is really terrible to her. I mean, really, really unkind and nasty to her, even though we should remember that it was Rhaenyra's side that actually killed her grandbaby, like as a baby. The end of season one, where Rhaenyra's kid ends up being killed by, by Aemon, who's riding the giant dragon, and it's kind of accidental, sort of. The thing that you can say, at least for that, is that Rhaenyra had made her son into a military figure, right? He's a pawn on the chessboard. He's actually being sent to a place to recruit people, and Aemon is there also. So they're actually at war at that point. Rhaenyra's side, under Daemon, actually deploys like a murderer to go behead a baby. I don't know, I'm not sure that the Rhaenyra has the, the upper hand. We'll get to more of that horrible show in just one second. First, let there be no doubt, big tech and the far left have joined forces to purge America of conservative views. Everyone right of center is now getting evicted from the legacy media. So why precisely are we choosing to give big tech companies all of our personal data? The battle lines have already been drawn. Big tech has made it clear where they stand. Now is the time for you to take a stand. Protect your personal data from big tech with the VPN I trust for my online protection, Express VPN. You see, every device, whether you're on your phone, laptop, or TV, has a unique string of numbers called an IP address. When you search for things online, watch videos, or even click a link, big tech companies can use that IP to track all your activity and then tie it back to you. When I use ExpressVPN, however, my connection gets rerouted through their secure encrypted servers, so these companies can't see my IP address at all. My internet activity becomes anonymized, my network data is encrypted. The best part, you don't need to be tech savvy at all to use ExpressVPN. You just download that app on your phone or computer, you tap one button, and now you are magically protected. Scan the QR code on the screen, visit the link in the description, or visit expressvpn.com slash benyt. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash benyt. Get three extra months for free. Expressvpn.com slash benyt right now to learn more. The, the biggest problem with the series, of course, is that none of these characters are particularly likable. They've turned Alicent from somebody sympathetic into somebody who's kind of scheming, but scheming for no reason, because she's scheming on behalf of terrible family members. Aegon is a loser. Aemon wants to have power, but you have no idea precisely why. He's just sort of the big baddie. In Game of Thrones, every season, there'd be new characters that were fascinating. And you feel bad when they die. If any character in House of the Dragon died, would you feel bad? I guess you're supposed to feel bad, kind of, when the queen who never was gets killed aboard her dragon. But do you really feel anything? Because nobody is doing anything that makes sense. So here's my big critique with series that I have problems with. Why does everyone act like idiots? So in season one, two, three, four of Game of Thrones, everybody has a clear motivation and they are making moves that may be wrongheaded, but are at least intelligent. They're not just doing stupid things. Here, for the sake of the convenience of the writers, people just do dumb crap all the time. Why, for example, would Rhaenyra personally fly over to King's Landing to talk to Alicent under the assumption that she's not going to be caught and killed. Like, it's a dumb move. Why would Alicent do the same thing in reverse, for example? I mean, at least there, you can make the case that she's doing it because she's going to betray her own family. But Rhaenyra isn't even doing that. She's just making basically a peace overture. She could do that via emissaries. Now, my understanding is that the co-showrunner for season one left right before the production of season two. So maybe that is why all of the creative decisions this season totally suck. Is it an excuse? No. So can the show course correct? The show can only course correct if they give clear motivations to the characters. Again, maybe they'll get to some battles. Maybe maybe all of that build up to the end of season two will finally emerge in, in some sort of battle, or maybe they'll just talk it out for another season like this. The, the only successes in this show, the graphic depiction of the dragons is very cool. I'll say the, the stupid scenes where the dragons are just burning randos, and then a couple of the randos get selected by the dragons. I feel like there's a better selection process than that. Don't you? Terrible HR violations. 
right there. I am highly disappointed by the season of House of the Dragon. It's gonna take a lot to get me back on board, but it feels like the opposite of season eight of Game of Thrones. Best season ever! <laughs> by that point, the writers were like, we gotta finish this thing up. So it's gonna take five minutes to get from King's Landing to the wall. And they just sped everything up randomly and so the pacing was off. Here, it's like, what if we do nothing for a full season? Meh. Okay, so apparently there is a new spinoff. It is titled Night of the Seven Kingdoms, which is set 100 years after House of the Dragon and 100 years before Game of Thrones. And honestly, like these kind of filling in the gaps series, I'm having a tough time caring a whole hell of a lot. These are apparently going to be about Dunk and Egg, who are from The Hedge Knight. I've read The Hedge Knight, The Hedge Knight is good, but how, are they gonna drag that out over like three seasons or something? Apparently the log line for the series is a century before the events of Game of Thrones, two unlikely heroes wandered Westeros. A young, naive, but courageous knight, Sir Duncan the Tall and his diminutive squire, Egg, who is Aegon, by the way. I, I understood that reference. Set in an age when the Targaryen line still holds the Iron Throne and the memory of the last dragon has not yet passed from living memory. Great destinies, powerful foes, dangerous exploits all await those improbable and incomparable friends. Okay, maybe, I guess but I'm not sure how many times you can go back to the well on this one. You're not adding to the universe, really. You're just filling in gaps in the timeline. Part of the problem here also is the Game of Thrones is a wide variety of families who are fighting for the throne. And here you just have two and they kind of know each other and all the characters are stagnant and nothing is happening and they made one of them good and one of them bad. Eh, I don't know, man. Hopefully season three will be better. You'll have to let me know because I'm not watching the first few episodes unless it improves. I hope that you enjoyed that recap of House of Dragons Season 2 better than I enjoyed the show House of Dragons Season 2.